I'm David Mills, and I'm here today to talk about the challenges facing the electricity business going forward here in the Pacific Northwest. For those of you who don't know me, from 1975 to 1979, I served in the U.S. Navy as a helicopter air crewman and a rescue swimmer. And a lot of people that know me today and interact with me today say I'm probably one of the calmest, coolest individuals they've ever met. A lot of that was uh, night after night of flying from a helicopter on the starboard side of this wonderful grand lady, the USS America, being prepared to rescue downed air crewmen and other Navy personnel. I could tell you some really horrific stories, some really harrowing stories, and not that they are directly in parallel to what our industry is going through today. There are some definite challenges that we need to attend to, and our company is uh, steadfastly focused on these challenges. But by way of backdrop, I just wanted to brief you a little bit about where your current energy supply comes from. So today, right now, about 37% of your electricity supply comes from coal. I want to talk about coal in a little bit. We are on a trajectory to remove coal from our portfolio by 2030. About 31% comes from hydroelectric generation, from the wonderful Snoqualmie Falls facility, as well as our dual dam facility up on the Skagit and Baker River complex. About 9% comes from wind and other renewable resources, a little bit of solar. And this comes from our three wind farms, the uh, Wild Horse and uh, Wind and Solar Facility, uh, located just east of Ellensburg, Washington. Uh, as well as our combined wind farms in Dayton and, and Garfield counties in Washington State, that would be Hopkins Ridge and Lower Snake River. We recently announced an initiative to reduce the company's carbon footprint by 50% by the year 2040. And I wanna, I'm really excited about this initiative and I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the elements of that initiative. I said I was gonna talk about coal. This is the part where I talk about coal. We are on trajectory to remove coal strip and coal generation entirely from our portfolio by 2030. The first two units of our coal strip generation, which is located in eastern Montana, will retire no later than July of 2022. The remaining two units, coal strip units three and four, we're on trajectory, as I said, to remove those from our portfolio by 2030. Effectively meaning by that date, we will be 100% coal free with respect to our energy portfolio. That's a huge portion of this initiative and one that we're very focused on. The second element is developing new products and services that can help our customers transition and help our portfolio transition to a clean energy future. These could be things like solar panels on rooftops, electrification of transportation, which I will also talk about, as well as encouraging our customers to put to install their own renewable resources as, and or sign up for one of many of our programs that I also will talk about. Transportation is the last element in terms of this tripod. Transportation is the key to a clean carbon future for the state of Washington. Did you know that transportation comprises 43% of the greenhouse gas emissions that are produced in this state? And if we're gonna be focused on a clean energy and a clean climate future, we need to attend to the transportation portion. PSC has been very active in the transportation sector. Specifically, we have launched and gained commission approval for an electric vehicle program. So you can expect us to see on a more robust nature installing charging stations, making ch charging stations and systems available for our customers, be you residential, commercial, or industrial. This is an area we really need to focus on and we have been very significantly involved in this. We have added about 60 new electric vehicles to our fleet and I have personally made a commitment and with board improvement, a board approval have, said, have stated that we're going to double the number of EVs in our personal, in the company fleet, every year for the next five years. In terms of our existing resource portfolio on the renewable space, I mentioned that we currently source 9% of your electric supply from renewable resources, specifically wind. Right now, as I mentioned, we operate three wind facilities. We are the third largest utility owner operator of wind generation in the United States. That's a significant accomplishment, one that we take great pride in and one that we're gonna be continuing to add onto our penetration of wind in our portfolio as well as other renewables. And energy efficiency, you call it conservation, demand side management, whatever you wanna call it, energy efficiency. And our historical investments in energy efficiency on, the par on behalf of our customers and to benefit our customers have saved 21 billion kilowatts over the course of time. 21 billion kilowatt hours is enough to supply electricity to all of our residential customers for one entire year. I think that's a significant feat 
And that's an area that we are going to continue to focus as we move forward in our carbon initiatives. Green Direct. This program has picked up a lot of chatter in the trade press. I'm proud to say that Puget Sound Energy was the industry leader in this initiative. Let me break it down for you. What is this initiative? Green Direct is where we're making investments in new renewable resources on behalf of our, of our commercial and our governmental customers. We've actually offered two waves of this. The first wave was a wind, wind product. It was subscribed out in a matter of weeks. The second wave, which we called Green Direct 2, is a solar product, solar facility located over in central Washington. That Green Direct 2 offering sold out in eight minutes. That tells us that there's a huge pent up customer demand for this type of product. So I'm working, my team is working diligently to create a Green Direct 3, probably a Green Direct 4, because offering a low or a no carbon energy supply in the future for our customers is, is paramount. Solar choice. Solar choice is sort of the, the small cousin to Green Direct. Solar choice, though, is for people that, say, uh, re apartment renters or homeowners that don't want to put panels or aren't able to put panels on their rooftop. Solar choice uh, allows you to buy the output of an independent power producer that is putting your equivalent energy supply onto our system. And it, that independent power producer is putting solar, clean carbon, clean energy supply on your behalf onto our system. Great program. Green power. The oldest program we have, 16 years old, over 40,000 customers signed up for it. Here's where you're buying into a program where investments are being made in new technologies, landfill gas, biodigesters, whatever it might be, but you're making an investment in transforming and developing this market, and in return, your entire energy portfolio, your entire energy demand is offset with those investments and the return of clean energy. Carbon balance. If you were just looking to offset the amount of carbon that your energy consumption might put out, you can go into our carbon balancing program and buy the requisite number of carbon offsets, which are a paper transaction, a paper, transa or paper deal, uh, that basically make that investment into an equivalent amount of clean energy investments. Customer connected solar. A lot of people hear this, talk about this as part of the net metering program. Customer connected solar, Small residential, small commercial customers who want to make that investment, want to go out on their own, make that investment in solar panels. We're, we're happy to integrate that and help our customer make that installation. And of course, our challenge is then to integrate it into our system and make best use of it. But this is our program to encourage our customers to do that. Transportation. I promised I'd come back to talk about transportation. So right now, the state of Washington has a target of only 50,000 vehicles, 50,000 electric vehicles on the road by 2020. California, by comparison, they're into the six, if not seven digits. Last I heard, they were looking at millions of vehicles by 2030, millions of electric vehicles. The state of Washington can do more. 50,000 is not the right target. That's not, we are not taking that to heart. I'm looking at the governor's, in, Governor Inslee's new clean energy program. Transportation is one of the three key pillars, and I hope that as a result of this next legislative session, the governor and the legislature are able to articulate a much more aggressive target in terms of the number of vehicles we want on the road in the state of Washington. I already mentioned that electric vehicles, that, I'm sorry, that vehicles in general, transportation contributes 43% of the emissions in the state of Washington. It's a huge target. It is the largest single sector of carbon emissions, and it needs to be attended to, and we stand ready to do that. We've stood up programs around electric vehicles, as I mentioned earlier, to help our customers and to actually install, install chargers in commercial, residential, looking at industrial, and of course, the public charging spaces as well. <laughs> I personally test drove an electric vehicle for one week, and prying me out of my carbon emitting suburban for a week was no easy feat. It was not a difficult journey for me at all. In fact, I found it refreshing and sort of releasing. I can say it, and I already have, our company's commitment is to make a significant investment into the electric vehicle infrastructure and walk our talk by doubling the amount, the number of electric vehicles in our corporate fleet every year for the next five years. This is actually one of those cars. Maritime. You can't have the conversation about transportation without talking about maritime. And you're going to say, what the heck is the electric utility doing involved in the maritime industry? I didn't know there was any, any electric-powered cargo ships right now. 
Well, there aren't that I know of, but what there is is there is a need and an objective and an opportunity to convert maritime transportation, cargo ships, from burning very dirty diesel bunker fuel to clean burning LNG. We are very active in this space. We are currently in construction of an LNG facility in the Port of Tacoma, and our anchor tenant is Tote Maritime. Tote Maritime operates two cargo ships that make twice weekly runs between Tacoma and Anchorage. It's a viable, it's the viable pot, uh, pathway or a highway of goods, and of goods between those two ports. Tote has made the commitment to completely convert that fleet as they have done their fleet in Jacksonville on the Puerto Rico run to convert that fleet to LNG. Their first ship is nearly done in that retrofit. The second ship is about to undergo dry dock to do so. What will that effect have on the Port of Tacoma? Well, jobs, clearly, but more importantly, significant, measurable, measurable reductions in emissions. 85% reduction of particulate matter in the Port of Tacoma and a 15% reduction in greenhouse gases just from simply converting those ships from burning diesel fuel to LNG. Oh, and by the way, that LNG fuel, that LNG facility also pr provides an important value, an important benefit for our customers, both our electric and our gas customers. That facility provides peak day, that's the day, the coldest day of the year, when we're all using them most of our electric and natural gas systems, that facility will provide that peak day capability on natural gas, not just for our retail gas customers, but for our power generation book. As I said, 22% of our, of our portfolio is generated using natural gas on the electric side. Last but not least, we're currently in the process of conducting what I'll call an all-source request for proposal. When I say all-source, we're talking about resources, electric generating resources. I was pleasantly surprised, I was overwhelmed by the level of interest that we got in this RFP. Nearly 100 proposals came at us from all states that are shown on this map, from a wide variety of resources, and I was most heartened to see the volume of resources, proposals that came at us in the solar, the wind, the pump storage, and the battery storage fields. Those are, those are all proposals that we are looking at very diligently right now and considering how from a cost, reliability, and environmental perspective they fit into our portfolio. So I look forward in future discussions to be able to tell everybody exactly how that RFP and the resources we selected from that RFP fit into our portfolio. So the time I was in the Navy not only told me, taught me how to be, I guess, sort of a post-teenage daredevil and build um, a repertoire of being calm under pressure, but it really taught me the value and the purpose of teamwork. And it's that teamwork that's gonna allow Puget and our customers to make this journey together. That journey to a cleaner energy future but at the same time being mindful of the affordability, the price of our product, the reliability and dependability of that product, and again, as I repeat, creating that better energy future, which is a cleaner future. Thank you.